The lighting in this video is a tiny bit off, but the content is on point. And check this out. What's up everybody, how's it going? In this video, I want to talk about imposter syndrome. This feeling of self-doubt about one's accomplishments, this feeling of being a fraud amongst your peers. Imposter syndrome is something that's super common across a bunch of different industries and in different parts of life, but it seems to be especially prevalent in tech and in software engineering. So in this video, I want to specifically share with you five tips or techniques that I've personally used to combat imposter syndrome, to basically not have imposter syndrome when I was a software engineer at Google. And Google is the kind of place where there's a lot of imposter syndrome. There are tons of brilliant people, especially brilliant engineers, so it's not uncommon to see a bunch of engineers at Google feel imposter syndrome. And yet, I didn't really have it, and I really attribute these five tips or techniques to not having imposter syndrome. So with that, if you're someone who has imposter syndrome or not, smash the like button and let's get into it. So the first technique that I've used to combat imposter syndrome has been to identify and then to actively acknowledge my strengths. Everybody has strengths. I don't care who you are, you have something or a few things that you're strong at, that you're above average at. And by being very self-aware of these things, and by being sort of mindfully aware of them, mindfully acknowledging them, it will help counterbalance some of the doubts you might have about other parts of your life or things that you're bad at. As an example for me at Google, since I came from a background where I had only been coding for about six months before joining the company, one of the places that I felt sort of self-conscious about was my technical ability. Was I as technically competent as other engineers? And that could have obviously given me that feeling of an imposter, of being an imposter. What I did is I realized that, hey, I've got strengths. I have pretty good communication skills. I'm very good at taking initiative. I'm very good at eliminating ambiguity in complex projects and then maybe conveying complex information in a more digestible way to other people and then maybe gathering them and helping a group or a team sort of execute on a common goal. And those are strengths that I have that some other engineers who might be more technically savvy than me might not have. And so that helped me sort of wrestle with that feeling of, hmm, I'm not as you know, good of a coder yet as these other people because I just have, don't have as much experience. The second tip that I can give you is this. A lot of people, myself included, have a tendency to give a lot more power than they should to the very small but vocal minority that criticizes them and that's maybe mean or rude, and not enough power to the overwhelmingly large yet silent majority that doesn't criticize them and that is nice and supportive. In other words, people tend to let one negative comment from one person affect them so much and overpower all of the positive comments or implied positive comments that a bunch of other people have given them. And here I can share an example unrelated to Google but more related to YouTube. As someone who's been posting a lot of videos on YouTube lately and sort of making myself vulnerable in some way, I've been exposed to a lot of comments. And while most of them have been overwhelmingly nice and supportive, and I thank you all for, for that, I have had a few comments that have been sort of mean, right, or critical. And of course, when you see these comments, you tend to kind of be affected by them. The next time you go to post a video, you think, hmm, should I post it or am I gonna get like a really bad comment and should I let that affect me? And then you realize, or you have to realize, you have to sort of train your mind to realize that why should you care about one person or a few people who are very vocal and critical when the rest of the people are overwhelmingly positive and supportive? It just doesn't make sense. So rationally, it doesn't make sense. So it's important to train your mind not to get affected by these few vocal people. Don't let the opinion of one hater overpower the many opinions of a bunch of supporters. And more importantly, don't let it overpower your opinion of yourself. The third technique. This one is perhaps a little bit more actionable than the first two because the first two were kind of about telling your mind to be more rational. This one is more about doing. The idea here is to identify your weaknesses this time, not your strengths, but your weaknesses, the things that make you feel 
doubtful about yourself, the things that make you feel like a fraud, and to actively work on them. Find the people who are really good at the things that make you feel like a fraud, the things that you don't think you're qualified in for whatever reason, and actively work on improving yourself in those areas until you reach the level of those people. So for instance, for me at Google, like I said before, I felt sort of less technically competent than some of my peers because I had less coding experience under my belt. So I told myself I'm going to double down on this and I'm going to try to work on technically complex projects. I'm going to try to really prove myself in this area. I'm going to try to catch up and learn more about, let's say, certain front-end frameworks that I think some people know more about. And I'm going to do it until I get sort of objective undeniable maybe metrics, maybe performance ratings or things where I'm going to tell myself, okay, now I am on their level. Like there's just no question about it. I'm on their level or even above it, right? So the idea is, again, identify those things that make you feel bad and just actively work on them. Do something about it. Just do it. I've had a lot of people come up to me and tell me that they feel like imposters in coding interviews. And when I dig a little deeper, they tell me that they feel weak in algorithms and data structures. So here, as far as this technique goes, the solution is simple. Just go on agoexpert.io, use the promo code CLEM, C-L-E-M, for a discount, purchase the product, and prepare for your coding interviews. You've identified your weakness, and now you're gonna double down and improve on it. This was an ad for my company. You were totally fine with it. Now you're gonna smash the like button, and let's move on with the video. The fourth tip is to stop making unreasonable, borderline absurd comparisons between you and certain other people. It's good to compare yourself to others sometimes. For instance, it might be good to compare your performance to someone who's sort of at your level to kind of have a benchmark of maybe where you should be at if you wanna get to the next level, for instance. But you'd be surprised how many times people compare themselves to others that they simply should not be comparing themselves to. As an example, you'll see people compare themselves to professional athletes in a given sport. And that just it, it just doesn't make sense. Or in the case of software engineering, you'll see an entry-level software engineer, maybe straight out of college or straight out of a coding boot camp, compare themselves to someone who's been working at Google for 20 years and who's sort of a senior Google fellow, the highest sort of uh, individual contributor engineering rank at Google, and they'll say, Look, look, compared to them, like, how can I compete? And it's kind of like the comparison just, just doesn't make sense. And it's very important not to do these comparisons. Try to compare yourself to people at an appropriate level. And then even there, if you start to feel that imposter syndrome, then go back to maybe the first couple of tips that I gave you about, well, okay, maybe you feel like you're really worse compared to this person in some aspect, but identify your strengths, acknowledge them actively, and then you know, counterbalance that. For the fifth and final technique, this is going to be once again something where you kind of have to just train your mind to be more rational. And here it's going to be this idea of just trusting the system. Oftentimes you hear people who have imposter syndrome when they win an award or when they get some sort of grade or performance rating or they pass an interview and they say, I just got lucky or I somehow you know, manipulated people into thinking that I was smart enough to get whatever I got. And here what I would say is, again, just trust the system. Trust that the system that was in place was itself smart enough or in itself good enough not to allow someone to just get lucky. In the same way that you sort of put more trust in other people whom you think are less of frauds than you are, Put more trust in the system and realize that the system is likely not the thing that's flawed. It's your thinking here that's flawed. In engineering, when you're using an external library or API from a reputable company like, say, Google, and you have a bug in your app, you'll often, as an engineer, tell yourself, I'm not going to immediately assume that it's Google's API or Google's library that's broken, it's likely a bug in my code because that is a sort of reputable source or system and I'm gonna trust that it doesn't have bugs. Similarly here, trust that the system that you sort of passed is correct and you didn't just get lucky. It didn't, that system didn't just break down for you specifically. So that's it. 
the five techniques that I've used in the past to combat imposter syndrome and to basically not have imposter syndrome, especially when I was at Google as a software engineer. I really hope that you'll be able to find at least one of them helpful. Do let me know in the comments if you do, and let me know if you have other techniques that you've used in the past to combat imposter syndrome. The last thing that I want to leave you with here is that I realize that a lot of these techniques can essentially be reworded as be more rational, and that's sort of annoying because it makes them less actionable in a way, but it's really important to realize that that's what it is ultimately, right? Imposter syndrome is this sort of irrational thought. In At no point should you ever think that feeling that imposter syndrome is correct. No, feeling imposter syndrome is not being humble. Fe feeling imposter syndrome is incorrectly being doubtful of your abilities or thinking that you're a fraud or not qualified. So really it is about eliminating that irrationality that's so powerful in, my, in our minds and just being more rational. Anyway, that's it for the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.